Going back now to the aviation sector and on SIA's prospects with the new airline in India, we're speaking now to Paul Ung, who is the global head of aviation and partner at Stevenson Harwood. He joins us live right here in the studio. Paul, thanks very much for joining us here in the studio today. Now, this isn't the first time these two partners have attempted to enter the uh, Indian civil aviation sector, is it? Were you surprised by SIA's move to establish this right now? I think we are not so surprised that uh, the Tata Group has been looking for a good partner to enter into the aviation industry. It's a bit surprising that uh, they have uh, decided to partner with Singapore Airlines. Why India, Paul? I mean, what are the aviation market's prospects in India right now? Could you describe that for us? Sure. The, uh, the Indian market is plain to see uh, over a billion population, a growing middle class, and uh, its actually domestic market has been traffic-wise been growing by over 10% a year. So it's a big market, but there are many challenges in India. A huge market indeed, but you know, operating an airline like this, what will the likely operating model be? We do know that other budget carriers have tried to get into the market or are getting into the market. What will its operating model be? As I mentioned, actually India is quite a challenging market in this part of the world. There are easier markets to enter into. Uh, one of the big challenges is that revenue will be in rupee and rupee has devalued greatly against the US dollar and the aviation business itself is very much US dollar based. Aircraft is bought in US dollars, your funding is in US dollars, your fuel prices, the fuel that you pay are in US dollars and the aviation industry itself, the domestic market has fed pretty poorly since 2007. So your business model has to have an international component to it. Uh, otherwise, um, it's quite a challenging market. Few, a few low-cost carriers in India actually have done well. Indigo, for example, is the biggest and the most profitable carrier, and they are low-cost, which is somewhat different from the premium carrier Singapore Airlines is. What about SIA's choice of its partner in this, in this case, Tata Sons? Is this going to be a good partnership for SIA, do you think? I think the, the current announcement is, is uh, still quite patchy. So. Um, it's, uh, it, it depends. I think uh, it's early days, and, uh, but with the expertise of a uh, top premium carrier like Singapore Airlines, I think uh, they would have done their numbers and their business plans quite carefully before entering into a challenging market like India. Uh, Paul, you know, analysts have said that SIA should you know, be exploring new markets to expand its revenue system. Uh, you know, it seems that it's done, done just that with this move, but how will this raise risks for the company, do you think, in terms of its exposure? Um, I think uh, it is an opportune time to go into India with uh, the very high profile insolvency of Kingfisher that has been uh, some capacity uh, that becomes available. And also the fact that the premium carriers in India are quite weak in terms of international standards. Uh, for example, last year Emirates was the biggest uh, carrier into in and out of India, uh, and a totally foreign carrier. So Singapore Airlines has a good chance of uh, doing well there. All right, thanks very much, Paul, for joining us in the studio today okay. to talk about this very exciting new venture for SIA and for Tata Sons. I've been speaking to Paul Ung. He is uh, with uh, Stevenson Harwood, and uh, he's been live here in the studio with us today. Now, when Business Singapore returns, it was all about tapering, tapering, tapering yesterday. Today, tapering seems like a non-existent term in the markets. How did the markets react? The action and reaction next.